Good day, everyone. My name is Mr. Garth Reed, and I'm a student ambassador of the University of Technology, Jamaica. I'm also a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. Today, we'll be looking at module two, which is series, sequences, and approximations in the Cape Pure Mathematics Unit 2 syllabus. And the topic is Intermediate Value Theorem. Right now, normally in the intermediate value theorem, the, the, the normal questions that you will get is that you're given a function, right? And they ask you to show that there is a root in a given interval, right? But I'd like to switch it up a bit. What if they gave you a graph instead of the function, right? They gave you the graph of the function and you're required to, you're required to answer some questions. All right, so let's look at it. It says the diagram below shows the graph of y is equal to f of x, and they gave us some questions below. So the first question says, state the intermediate value theorem for the function f, which is defined on the closed interval x1 comma x2. The second part of the question says, hence use the intermediate value theorem to show that f of x has a root in the closed interval 4 comma 5. All right, so let's do the first part of the question. It's pretty simple. We just need to state what the intermediate value theorem says. All right, so this is part one, solution. So this is going to be my statement. If f of x is a continuous function defined on the closed interval which is x1 comma x2 right and the values of f of x1 and f of x2, right? So those two values are of opposite signs. Then there exists at least Right, at least one real number k such that k is a member of the closed interval x1 comma x2 and f of k is equal to zero. Right, so let me just refresh your memory on what the intermediate value theorem says. So if you're given a graph of a continuous function, which is defined on a closed interval, right? And the values of f of x1 and f of x2 are of opposite signs, meaning that one is negative and the other is positive, then we can say that there exists at least one real number, right? At least one. It can be more than one, right? But the intermediate value theorem says at least one real number such that that real number is a member of the closed interval and f of k is equal to zero. f of k equal to zero means that when you substitute that x value into the function, you will get zero, meaning that you will have a root, right? So x is equal to k will be the root. Okay, great. So now we, we have successfully answered the first part of the question, which says state the intermediate value theorem. Now, the other part says, hence use the intermediate value theorem to show that f of x has a root in the closed interval four comma five. All right. So yes, normally when you are given a function, right? You would substitute the four inside the function 
and substitute the five inside the function and look for the change in sign, right? Meaning that one will be negative and the other will be positive as, as the output. In the same way, we'll be looking at the graph. If I should substitute four into the function, you realize that that part of the graph is below the x-axis, meaning that the y value is going to be negative. All right, and if I should substitute five into the function, you realize that value is above the x-axis, meaning that the y value is going to be positive. All right, and clearly we can see that f of x is a continuous function, meaning that it doesn't have any breaks in the graph. All right, so we know that the graph is continuous. That is a must in order for the intermediate value theorem to be applied. All right, so we'll be looking at part two solution now, based off what we just said. All right, so this is going to be my statement based on observation. of the diagram above, right? Clearly, f of four, as we stated, is negative, so it's less than zero, right? f of five is positive, so it's greater than zero, and f of x, is a continuous function. F of x is a continuous function in the closed interval, which they gave us is four comma five. All right, now since this is true, Right, so since this is true, by the intermediate value theorem, we can now say that there exists at least one real number k such that k is a member of the closed interval four comma five right and f of k is equal to zero Good. So that is our statement for part two. All right. So we have successfully completed part two of the question. So yes. So based on the graph above, clearly you can see that the you can see that there's a root right here. Right. Let me go back up. There's a root right here, right? That is, the, that is where the, the graph cuts the x-axis. So that is the k value that we have been speaking about, right? And clearly k is a member of the interval four comma five, all right? So that is the intermediate value theorem graph question that we will be looking at, all right? I thank you for joining. I'm Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador for the University of Technology Jamaica and mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics.